Hey everybody, what is going on? It's Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. Now, this is a story that you would expect the Yakuza or some organized crime to pull off normally. Uh, it's a bizarre story. But a man by the name of Tomio Masuda, a 67-year-old resident of the Kasukabe Sateyama Prefecture in Japan, owned a killifish store that sold Madaka rice fish pretty much exclusively, uh, as well as plants and things too. And according to police, he was arrested for having genetically modified organisms in his uh, care and custody. And when they arrested him, he said that he couldn't help himself. They were the most beautiful fish he'd ever seen. He said they were the most beautiful things he'd ever seen. And the fish were hatched from genetically modified killifish eggs bred at the Tokyo Institute of Technology. Now, the fascinating part about this article is that the Tokyo Institute of Technology is in Yokohama, and the fish in question are a beautiful bright red color. They are Medaka rice fish, or Tizolapsa, uh, or I always say their name wrong, but Ortiz Latizips. Um, and they are originally from a 2009 study. And the killifish were turned red because of a gene modification where they wanted the fish to infloresce, and, uh, infloresce uh, under black light or under UV light. And uh, basically, they wanted to infuse coral into uh, the, the genes and the protein in a specific type of coral from a coral reef into the tissue of the Madaka rice fish. And back in 2009, this was still fairly novel. Uh, the glowfish were still, you know, a new idea. They had had rats and dogs with, you know, green uh, fluorescent colors for a while, and they could do... Um, kind of marker cells and proteins and things like that. Uh, but it hadn't really been done in a lot of colors. So the fact that this was done so early, the bright red and everything, is a bit interesting because then Glowfish, the company um, in the U.S., bought the rights to this. And in the years since, uh, they actually outlawed the GMO organisms from being made unless it's specifically laid out and proposed and kept under custody of uh, strict rules and everything. Um, and it turns out that what happened is a grad student at the time stole the fish. He stole some eggs of these fish while he was working underneath you know, the university studying this stuff. What they were hoping to do is put the proteins from this coral into a specific cell type so you could say put it into scar tissue or into a certain tissue that grows when you have skin cancer and then what you could do is put a uv light on and all of a sudden your normal skin would light up you know bright red in theory that that was their end goal or to track trace nerve pathways and things like that now the interesting part about this is Normally, you'd think this would be kind of an organized crime thing, but this was pulled off 15 years ago almost now by a kid who was a grad student. He took the fish home, he bred them, and then he brought them to that man who owned the shop. Well, he did that probably seven or eight years ago, and he's since gone on with his life, and he's 35 years old now, and it turns out they can't arrest him. It's been the 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 time period in which they could have arrested him, the uh, uh, statute of limitations is over. And because of that, they had to figure out another way to charge people for this, essentially, for being involved in this conspiracy. And it was going to be under uh, a convention known as the Cartagena uh, Convention, which was a uh, meeting of a bunch of countries from around the world uh, in Cartagena, Colombia. 
and they got together and said, you know, let's let's not allow genetically modified living organisms uh, to be bought or sold publicly, uh, only research in labs, and let's let each other know about it. Like let's let's make a global uh, list and repository of information. So. The fact that this happened kind of before that, um, when security may have been a little bit looser, is interesting. The fact that this happened at all is interesting. Now, also you should understand that rice fish in Japanese culture carry a lot of value. And rice fish in the past have fetched up to you know $10,000 for new morphs and things like that. Now that's, that's a rare exception, auctions and things. but. They're also uh, an important fish in that, along with zebra danios, fruit flies, lab rats, and mice, uh, the Medaka rice fish is one of the most studied organisms in the world. Medicinally, they have been studied for all sorts of things, for uh, you know modification, uh, for selecting some that may only uh, live a certain amount of time or may have always they always develop cancer and then they treat them with cancer treatments and things like that so there's all sorts of lineages out there in universities around the world uh, of zebra danios and of the uh, midaka rice fish that have these strange traits and some of them happen to be aesthetically appealing now these fish Admittedly, I, I mean, I would think they were pretty without the black light too, and I would be amazed and assume that they were bred or crossed with, you know, some line that maybe we just don't know about in the U.S. So the question is, how many are out there? Police seized 1,400 of these fish, and it turns out they were selling them for $800 a pair, but, I mean, that, that sounds like a lot. I mean, that would mean that their fish... The, what they had and everything was over a $1.2 million bust. But in reality, the individual rice fish were only selling for like $1.50 each for the males, uh, and they were holding the females so that they, you know, nobody could make more of them. Uh, and then it, you know, hopefully wouldn't get back to the police. They thought they could limit their their uh, trouble that way but they just listed them in this store that sells rice fish as red shiny rice fish so the question is how many people came in and bought them just as that not knowing that they are black light reactive too and genetically modified versus the now five others that have been arrested that are facing uh, possession of the genetically modified organism charges and the international, um, basically a conspiracy charge uh, could be applied to. So it's just like a large smuggling or poaching operation as far as legally concerned. Japan does not like uh, to, to be made a fool or to have uh, itself stand out for negative press uh, or people, individuals in, in Japanese society as a whole. Um, they're very prideful and um, unified uh, society in the sense of uh, the, the, the nail that stands up gets hammered. You know, that's an old saying uh, from both Japanese and Chinese society and about conforming. And so the fact that these individuals went rogue like this broke the law and they did it over fish is very interesting now the question is did they sell them to overseas people said that they in 2021 visited several trade shows and those are frequented by all sorts of people from singapore and from hong kong and if they were selling pears within japan and they've traced back 50 people that had the fish but didn't know what they were. Plus there were 1,400 on hand. Do you guys really think that, that they've, they've, they've rounded everyone up and they've got it all under control? Or what do you think? You think there's gonna be more? So the question I wanna pose to you guys, and I'd really like to hear in the comments is, you know, 
what do you think of GMO fish like glow fish? You know, they're illegal in Europe. And one downside to that is now people are selling the tattooed and or dyed fish that are uh, either injected or tattooed or sometimes even just put in dye, um, like glass fish and things like that um, are being sold in Europe because those are still legal to have the quote unquote painted or candy fish that I've covered before on the channel, which is a whole other very bad business, lots of infection and disease in those fish. Uh, plus they just, you know, don't have a very long lifespan either uh, because of the conditions they're raised in generally and all the infection potential there. Now, the other thing is you know, what if these get out in, in the Amazon, some have gotten out some of the glow fish that were being bred down there. Now, these are not glow fish, uh, that are being, uh, involved in this case in Japan. This was a independent university study, but how many labs out there in the world are keeping zebra danios, rice fish, axolotls. We've also seen the GMO axolotls here in the U S I've seen them at the local pet stores. Now this is facing five to 10 years in prison in Europe and also in Japan for trafficking these species. So, I mean, what do you guys think here in the US? Do you guys think it's not a big deal? We already have glowfish, whatever. Uh, and it was said by the glowfish company that they're supposed to die if they get out. They're bright colored. They're not gonna survive if they get out into the wild. Well, it turns out that the tetras that have gotten out in Brazil, they're doing just fine and they're reproducing and that gene follows every generation, right? Just like that guy who stole those fish in 2009, that gene is still the dominant viable gene that makes these fish look the way they do. It's really incredible. So I'd like to hear that, what you guys think about them, but also I'd like to hear if you could have a fish of any color, what would it be? And would you be willing to, you know, break the law to have that fish? I, I mean, you don't need to say, obviously you're not admitting to it, but I'd like to know if there's anything, you know, an angel fish that's neon purple or how about a bright blue Corydoras? I mean, how much is that worth to people for the novelty? Something about it is less valuable to me if you know you can just do it genetically or with with in a lab something about the years of breeding and the random mutation of nature is what makes it so fascinating to me so i don't really get the appeal as much uh after the initial ooh well that's a nice looking fish um but what do you guys think I, i'd like to hear about it all right guys i'll talk to you later this was just too strange not to mention have a good day, and I'll see you next time on The Secret History, living in your aquarium. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to find more content like this.